holding any water. And in behind this piece of aluminum, here, and just ate the entire bottom part of this beam. Water is your home's number one enemy. And when it gets behind things where it's not supposed to be, bad stuff happens. On this edition of Forever Home, we're gonna be taking a look at some water damage that happened on this front porch, how it got in, how we're gonna fix it, and what we're gonna to do to keep it from happening in the future. That's next on this edition of Forever Home. Here we go. So you can see we've already ripped the Band-Aid off of this, try to figure out what was going on. Client called us, they were noticing the top of this post was pushing up into the metal and that there was becoming some crinkling on this edge and that it was almost like there was something wrong with the aluminum flashing where it was bending around the post and they weren't sure why and what that meant and trying to understand what could be possibly going on. And so as we got up and did a little bit of investigation, it didn't take us too long to figure out that this piece of J-channel here was behind that flashing, funneling any water that came down off of that J-channel down in behind this piece of aluminum. It was trapped in this area here and just ate the entire bottom part of this beam. So today's project, take down all the soffit, take down that gutter, take down the soffit underneath here, get everything apart and exposed so that we can get into this and begin replacing the pieces that have been damaged, get those replaced. Maybe have to put some temporary supports up in the process. We'll see how that plays out. And then button it back up, put it back up together and make sure that these layers are then correct on the back end so that we don't have that problem again in the future. And we're not sure if someone's tried to play with this before. Norm found that one of these pieces of soffit was caulked right up to this side. Maybe they're trying to stop that, but is it stopping it or is it actually preventing the water from getting out and preventing the draining and the drying that we always talk about on this show. So we've got a little bit of damage here in the beam pocket. We're gonna have to get this apart, see what's going on, get that fixed and replaced. So it's gonna be a fun project. This is where it starts. <laughs> we'll take you along for the tour. Here we go. So we've got the soffit down. We've got the gutters down. We're into the beam. We figured out that they're two by tens. I've gone to the store, we've picked up new ones and Norm is working on cutting the old ones out so that we can get them replaced. We've got a temporary support post in place here and that's gonna hold the weight of the roof while we're doing all the demolition work. Everything up has been removed through here. We've got a piece of temporary board up top with our jack holding things up. And Norm's working on cutting into beam. Now this right here is just plain laziness. I mean, not only do we have this piece of J-channel tucked inside of the flashing, funneling water behind the flashing layer here, they never finished the tar paper, so any water that comes out the bottom of this J-channel, which it's going to do from all the water coming down that wall, it's getting dropped right into this cavity, and they didn't bother with any house wrap, any protection. And of course, it's eating that and continuing to work its way down there. One more glaring mistake. They've got their step flash here coming down and this piece of J channel is in front of that so any water comes down it's going right behind. So we've gotten everything apart and uh, of course that water damage as we con were concerned came all the way down this side uh, behind the house wrap. Took out a lot of the OSB and uh, structural framing looks all right. We're adding one additional stud here just to give us something to make sure that beam's sitting on something solid. On the previous installation one of the two beams that came out from the house here was just kind of hanging it wasn't supported by anything and actually the second one wasn't really sitting on the post it was up in the air kind of hanging up there as well just hung on the four nails. So we're gonna cut some shims we're gonna get those in right, we're gonna cut the new stud to the correct height so it's gonna support that beam properly, leveling off the post so that we, since we already have a preset post height, we wanna make sure that we're matching that with everything else that we're doing. So we've cut out the water damaged OSB. You can see the piece that came off here and we've probably got a couple of uh, before pictures we can splice in here and show you that as well. And then Norm just finished cutting our replacement piece. So that's getting ready to go on the house. And once we get that back up, we can work on rebuilding the plywood on this end of things and then start putting the beam back together. We got two new 16 foot pieces of lumber. We'll be putting those back in taking out temporary support, but we've got a little bit more uh, sheathing work that we need to repair first that's gonna have to get done before those beams start to go up in place. So if you're tackling a project like this by yourself, it's very important to make sure you put your lines on the siding so you know where things go back. And you'll notice that we put our new house wrap on here first and got it way behind things and then brought our old house wrap over, making sure the layers down here at the bottom are all in the correct sequence going down. Then any water that ever got behind this stuff it's gonna land on top of this and still get brought to the outside. But now we've got our lines back, hopefully in most of the same places. And especially here at the corner post, we wanna make sure that we're bringing this in and lining that back up and then getting our nails in the old holes where possible, not nailing it too tight. And if we get all of these pieces back in the right spot, it's gonna fit back together nicely. And if we don't, it's gonna be a headache. So we've got the new lumber in place. The new beams are up. We've got a temporary support brace where we've installed a piece of blocking across the rafters. We're using it to help hold this up while we're getting the aluminum in place so that we can set the post. The original post base was not attached to the cement, so we've drilled that out and we've got some tap count anchors holding that down into the cement. Of course, we've got our siding back up close to the top and now we're working on the capping 
to get aluminum all these beams where they need to go so that we can then flash over that and keep the rain coming down on the outside of things. And that actually has to go on before we can put on the last of our siding because that aluminum has to come all the way back to the house. So we're gonna finish getting the aluminum on and then we can install this last piece of siding across the top here. Now this beam pockets back into the wall in order to get the old pieces out, we're actually beating that with hammers and chisels to break those pieces of blocking out. So we do have a little bit of drywall damage that occurred on the inside. This is in the garage space, just a small blowout. Uh, all things considered, very minor compared to the level of work uh, that we had to do in order to get this out and back in and you know being concerned about nail pops and those different things. So the fact that that's the only thing that we've seen so far, very, very happy about that piece of things. Something that's quick, easy, simple to patch, and it's in the garage. So touch up painting if the colors don't match exactly. I mean, most homeowners aren't real super uptight about that. Or we can repaint that whole wall if that's something they want us to do. Pretty good that it's in the garage. It's not a living space. It's not something you're staring at every day. No big deal. If there's a little bit of damage there, we can fix that on the back end of the project. No problem. Now, of course, the fun part is taking our 24 inch wide piece of metal and getting enough of the right distances to make sure that it's up high enough that it winds up behind the F channel for the soffit material so that you don't see this edge. We wanna make sure that this is tucked up behind there and that since this hasn't moved, we have to make sure we bend the metal with enough height here that it's gonna wind up behind that and the same thing on the outside. This blue reference line here is level with the outside. This for where our uh, F channel is gonna have to go here to make sure that we're covering again this piece of aluminum once it's up there. So how do we bend aluminum? I'm glad you asked. Let's go take a little walk over to the sheet metal break. So aluminum comes in a 24 inch wide coil in boxes that look something like that, usually 50 feet long each. And then we're able to take and cut those to length, put them here on the sheet metal break, lock that metal down, bend that bottom up, and maybe we'll take a chance to show you some of that. So we've got the aluminum capping nailed back on. The new, new product is installed, looking great. Working on the soffit inside, Norm's already completed that run inside. Gonna show you a couple tricks here on the outside. So whether you're a homeowner doing this for yourself or you're a contractor and you, you struggle to get these back in the same spot every time, a couple of tricks to show you that we did when we were taking this apart. You'll notice that I've put a little reference line right here. There's another one here, third one there, okay. We've also got those same lines out here on the outer edge, there and here and up against here. I've also numbered this, that's a number five. Uh, this one I didn't number, this one's a three. And so it kind of gives me some reference points for where things are. And then I took on the back of our pieces in the dirt, in the dust, and just scratched with my glove or the back side of my hammer or whatever, just a number in the dust. So, okay, that was piece number five. And then I took it down. We started with one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to that end. We had about 13 pieces on this side. And then as we're putting them back up, there's a couple of few things that we're doing, all right? So we've got piece number five. We're gonna slide that in here from the end. And then as I'm putting this in, we wanna get that back and over top. But you've gotta watch that you don't get this cockamamie, you know, crooked, going different directions. Well, the person who installed this previously, you also wanna make sure that it stays centered between here and here, so that this doesn't just fall out of the left side, you know, with the wind blowing or whatever, okay? So if you only put one nail in the front, and a lot of times that's sufficient, you can just get away with one nail right here. And I am trying to hit the old nail holes again to make sure we keep this square as we come down. And if you ever get a question about that, you can always grab your speed square and just give it a check and make sure that you're moving in the right direction. But the person who installed this previously actually put a nail in every one of these little divots here. And the nice thing about those is because they were punched very specifically uh, into the wood as opposed to being in a slot here, I know exactly that if I put this nail, in fact, let's go back in the rear one because that's gonna help hold it square. If I put that nail back in the old hole, guaranteed this is in the same spot that it was in before. And then I can put this up here. Now, you gotta watch what angle you're at because I'm finding that here as it's falling out, but if I shift it a little bit, now it's in right. So the question is, okay, that's where. Where was this before and how tight is it stretched? You know, if you, you stretch this tighter versus looser, that's gonna change your alignment of things. So I'm wondering if this piece isn't a little bit too loose, I may pop that nail back out and we're gonna slide that over just a little bit so we get a little bit better overhang to keep this from just falling out when every time the wind blows through here. So a couple of tricks that you wanna do when you're taking this down, put some reference lines on, on make a story pole, if you will, Put reference lines on your J channel, your F channel, whatever you got on your, on your uh, facial board here and keep track of those things and then number these pieces because what if on this end we were only 13 inches and on that end say we were 14 inches and that these things grew as they went. You'd be pulling your hair out if you didn't keep track of those sequence when you took these down. So make sure you, when you're doing it, it's going to make it easier for you to put it back up. Put it back up efficiently and not have pieces falling out long after you're gone and finished this job. Because the last thing that you want is a callback from a customer saying, you put this back together and now all these pieces are flopping and flying out in the wind. What'd you guys screw up? A couple of tips just to make your life a little bit easier. 
Norm's working, we got that final piece of uh, siding up on this side now, and he's gonna start reinstalling the shutters down there. And we're just about ready to start cleaning this up up. Next thing we're gonna do is put the uh, fascia capping back on, and then we can grab that gutter, put that gutter back up here on the roof and start packing up and cleaning up. Almost done this project. And this brings us back to where this whole nightmare began. We've got our new flashing up, our new capping on the outside of our new beams. We've got the old tar paper. We've got a new piece of OSB here. We've got the old step flash, the old J channel. And now it comes time for Norm and I to fabricate a couple of new pieces of flashing to get this uh, step flash down, out, and over this, and then fill the rest of this in with either some more aluminum or some house wrap product and bring this down. And then of course, put the J channel and the gutter back together. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where it's important to get the details right because if we don't get this part right everything else we did is all for nothing and in five or ten years she's gonna be hiring somebody else to come back and repair the same damage all over again so we've got to get this part right so we've got our house wrap down behind here now out on top of the flashing out of the top of this capping layer here we've got our siding reinstalled j channel layered back in correctly on top of all that flashing that we added behind there there's some additional pieces of metal to you to help to move that water to the outside uh, up underneath this J-channel that you're not going to be able to see because we hit it with the J-channel. But any water that gets down there is going to leak out between the J-channel and this piece of capping. And then for belt and suspenders, we added a piece of kind of step flash here bent into a Z. So any water that comes down this piece of J-channel down the roof is going to land here and either splash into the gutter or overflow out here out the front. Anything that lands in this channel is going to drip out the back edge here and straight down this face right here. So. Nothing is sealed that water can't get out and it's gonna allow it to drain and to dry. And those are the two most important things when we're talking about the exterior of your home. Drainage and drying. If it can't dry, it's gonna die. So we wanna make sure that we allow for that drainage and that drying and that airflow to be able to get in there and do what it needs to do and allow moisture to make its way down and out of your house so it's not trapped back there behind the wood. So just a little bit of cleanup left to do. And then this project is not gonna just be done. It's gonna be coat built. That never gets old. It's finished, it's clean, it's pretty, and most importantly, it's waterproof. So we've got all of our flashing layers correct like we showed you before. All that water's gonna come to the outside. This is gonna be beautiful for many, many years to come. I don't know if it was the roofing crew, the gutter guys, the siding guys, but somewhere along the line, something got out of sequence, out of order, and that's what caused this massive amount of water damage that had to get corrected. So everything back together underneath. Looks pretty, looks beautiful. We've got just a little bead of adhesive seal in that corner just to dress it up, make things look nice. Post is back in place, this time with anchors, so that we know that that post base is screwed into the ground, it's screwed into the roof. If you got a massive wind in here and had some uplift, it's possible that post could get dislodged, um, but you've got to lift this quite literally a quarter inch to get that post out of that cap. So don't think it's going anywhere. Obviously, we've showed you on other jobs, uh, that uh, deck job that we did, some of the ways that you can do to tie things together. Uh, this is not a case where that's absolutely essential because of how this is set up and because it is anchored into the house in so many different ways. Worst case scenario is that you just happen to notice at some point that that post isn't sitting on the base where it should and then you may have to get some blocks of wood. But in this case, like I said, most times the weight of the porch is sufficient to hold those in place. But if you ever notice that the post on your post are attached at the top and the bottoms have gotten out of kilter and they're not quite plumb anymore, it's possible you had a wind event that lifted that porch up and allowed those bottoms to kick just a little bit. We're gonna have to get a jack out, lift that porch up or just a little bit, take the weight off of that, straighten those back out. It's an easy fix, but it's probably something that should get taken care of so that you're bearing correctly on those posts. So this is one of those projects that involves a multitude of trade skills, or like we like to call it a multidisciplinary craftsman, because we're gonna be doing a little bit of siding, soffits, aluminum capping, that exterior work. We're gonna have some gutters and downspouts that we're gonna have to address and deal with. There's gonna be some carpentry work, some carpentry framing, some rough framing that needs to get taken place. And of course, all of that finished trim work to get it back together and looking pretty when it's done. And to find one team that that has all those skill sets can kind of be a unique situation for a homeowner. We know that a lot of homeowners are very uh, afraid of the process or scared of the process of looking for a contractor and trying to make sure that they are spending their money wisely, that they're hiring a reputable team, that they're not going to get ripped off by somebody who's going to take their money and run, that the repair is not going to get done, it's going to be done correctly, it's going to be done the right way, and like we used to say, done. it's not just done, it's coat built. And those fears can very can very, be very, very real and paralyze customers and keep them from getting the work that they desperately need to get done on their house. So it is difficult. So our hope is that through these videos, 
videos that were giving you some of the information that you need to educate you in the process of what goes into a repair like this that maybe you might be facing on your house, whether you live here locally in Southern Chester County where we serve, or anywhere across the country or around the globe, that you're getting the information that you need to understand how these repairs are supposed to go together so that you can ask some very intelligent questions of those contractors that you're interviewing to see if they really know what they're talking about. Ask them to walk you through the process of what it's going to take, step by step, scope of work, detailed, line by line, what it's going to take for them to do that. There should be a detailed scope of work, not necessarily line item pricing, but there ought to be a detailed scope of work explaining the process uh, for how that's going, the project's going to come together and what they're going to do. And if you don't see some of these steps listed in there, it's possible they're going to try to nail you for a change order later. So, oh, we forgot about this or we didn't think about this. That's going to be an extra, you know, thousand dollars, whatever it's going to be. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got all that in writing, detailed out, and that you've got that contract in your hand. Also, always ask them for a certificate of insurance. Call the agent, verify that certificate of insurance is valid. It's got your name, your phone number on it, your address, those sorts of details. And we've got all sorts of tips on our blog. If you click over to copebuilt.com, click on resources in our blog. We've got a whole category on uh, questions you can ask in screening contractors and trying to ensure that you're hiring somebody that's going to take excellent care of your forever home. Remember, there's nothing our team doesn't do. Roofing, siding, windows, doors, decks, anything on the interior of your home, kitchens, basements, bathrooms, plumbing, electrical, drywall, spackle paint. Build your custom dream house, an addition, a garage. Take a picture of what's bugging you. Send it to our team right here on our Facebook page. Get that contact us button there at the top. Send us those photos along with your contact details and then we have a dedicated office staff standing by to converse with you weekdays, 9.30 in the morning until two in the afternoon. You can give us a call at 484-748-0008. Choose option two for Coat Built, your full service construction and renovation company and extension to four new projects. We hope you'll leave a comment down below. Let us know what you learned. Ask us some questions about this project or a project going on at your house. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get updated about all of our great content we're releasing each and every week to help you be able to better screen contractors for work on your forever home. This is Drew in beautiful Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Remember, when we're finished with it, you'll be proud to say it's not just done. It was Coat Built. We'll catch you on the next edition of Forever Home. Bye for now.